We're going to take a walk down memory lane with the author of a book about something I remember very fondly, the old Palisades Amusement Park. So stay with us. Toyota, New Jersey's oldest Toyota dealer, serving Bergen County for over 30 years. We have your family car, from the flagship of the Toyota Quality Fleet, the six-passenger Avalon sedan, to the award-winning Camry, the restyled Corolla, the economical Tercel, and the beautiful Previa van. They're all ready for you to buy or lease at Parkway Toyota now. Come to Parkway Toyota, because we give you more. A Lube Express drive through Lube Center offers consumers a full-service oil change in just 10 minutes, and no appointment is ever needed. Your Lube Express technicians are fully certified to ensure your complete satisfaction. In just 10 minutes, Lube Express will change your oil and filter, grease the entire chassis, top up all fluids, plus perform these other valuable services. Remember, all work at Lube Express is 100% warranty approved. Visit the Lube Express store in your area at 20 Newbridge Road in Bergenfield, just a quarter mile east of Pathmark. It's time to get ready for all your gardening needs at Derek Hole Farm and Garden Center. We carry the largest assortment of fertilizer, tools, pottery, and everything you need to keep your plants in perfect shape. And our plant assortment will amaze you. Hundreds of thousands of plants and flowers to choose from, all hardy and beautiful, including geraniums, petunias, marigolds, begonias, impatiens, fuchsia, ivy geraniums, evergreens, and so much more. Derek Hole Farm and Garden Center, your gardening companion since 1941. Welcome back to Jersey's Talking. We need some calliope music. We need some cotton candy because every summer, millions of New Jerseyans visit Great Adventure Action Park and other theme parks in the state. But before those places were even a glimmer in the builder's eyes, the Palisades Amusement Park, which opened in 1898, was here. I remember it well, not from 1898, but from its later years. And here to tell us about the history of the park and his book on the subject is the author, Vince Gargiulo. Vince, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lee. I normally let the producer and the associate producer book the guests, but the minute I saw this book, I said, get him. Because oh, I have <laughs> such fond memories of Palisades Park, riding the cyclone, swimming in that big pool, and cotton candy out my ears. And you look too young to remember Palisades. When did it close? Uh, 1971, 25 I, years I, ago. I am very well old enough okay. to remember the Palisades <laughs> Park from long before that. I seem to remember going there on a ferry. I lived in Manhattan in New York. Sure. You know, the, the interesting thing about Palisades is a lot of people's memories of, of the park not only include all of the fun that they had at the park, but it included the transportation, yeah. whether it be the ferry boat or back in the old days the trolley or the bus or even just piling into Dad's uh, station wagon and uh, now, going over to the park. When you go to amusement parks now, do you? I, I'll still go to an amusement whatever, park. Okay. There's nothing like Palisades. Do you see things that say, oh, well, Palisades had that long before this? Or, you know, what, what kind of things? Well, I, uh, Palisades was a classic, traditional amusement park. Uh, it was a trolley park, which was, uh, especially on the Northeast, uh, a lot of the amusement parks that started in the turn of the century were because of the trolley system. Yeah, you go and where the people can get to you. Exactly. Right. And, uh, and that's how Palisades started. So it was a, truly a classic trolley park uh, that survived for 75 years. Now, originally it was like a picnic grounds and, yep. and, and stuff like that. When, in your mind, did it really become what we could classify as an amusement park? Well, in 1909, uh, well, 1908 rather, um, the park was purchased from the trolley company. 
uh, by actually the first mayor of Cliffside Park, which was one of the two yeah. towns that Palisades was located in. And uh, he hired a man named Alvin Dexter, who was a showman, who started bringing in rides like carousels yeah. and, and Ferris wheels. And, and that's where it started to become what, what we consider today an amusement park. I'm looking at some of the photographs in, in here. And uh, we have Palisades Amusement Park, admission 10 cents. Uh -huh. And uh, right up to the end, right yeah, up until 1971. Only a dime? Tuesdays and Thursdays. They a nickel, had special Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, you see, it didn't, it didn't matter oh, how well, much well, it Oh, well, what have we got up there on... Uh, that right guess, there, Superman. Yep. See, one of the one of the interesting things about Palisades is when they advertised uh, the amusement park, they didn't just advertise it locally like you would expect. Yeah. They adver that was DC Comics, um, National Periodicals, which was a which was a national publication. In fact, international. I mean, people overseas bought it. So even kids out in Oregon and Washington and England even even saw these ads for Palisades Amusement Park. I know you have fond memories of Palisades Park, but what made you decide to write a book about it? Too much free time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, when, when, you have, when you have such a, f such a fondness for something that was part of your childhood, um, I, was, I was really surprised that there was so little information to be found when I went to the local library. So I just started delving into uh, the research. Vince, what's, well, we have another picture. You can throw them up anytime you want in there, and we'll figure out what the, oh, well, there we have Who a bathing is beauty. Who well, is that? Uh, I'm not sure who she is, but, like but that was the uh, no. showboat. <laughs> that was the showboat funhouse, which was uh, the old funhouse had a slight fire in 1963, so they remodeled it. They gave it this Mississippi showboat look, um, and, and it was a great place. It had 35 attractions for the price of one admission. And there, were, there was a midway kind of at Palisades Park. Well, there were actually eight midways. The pop guns and uh, sure, there was a shooting and gallery. And yeah, um, I mean, dancers at any time? Uh, I'm Little sure some, somewhere, somewhere Some, along the line. Come on, you know all about this. I want a straight answer. <laughs> well, all right, if, if you're really uh, pressing me for the answer. There actually was a slave market back in the 30s, I think, that, um, that the park, a couple of the people in the park were arrested for. What it was was a... Uh, White slavery? Well, no, it was, it was a, a, a matchmaking service. Oh, I see. Um, but... Uh, there, there was a big to-do about it because they considered it a slave market. <laughs> uh, eventually, everybody was cleared of it, but that was the, that was the big talk. But it was a scandal. It was a scandal. Okay. Yeah. It was What's, publicity more than what that. What is there now where the Palisades Park used to stand? There are um, oh, three or four different uh, high-rise complexes that apartments. stand on the, uh, Yeah, apartments, uh, condos. Um, and no sign, no monument, nothing to, to mark the spot that this is where uh, millions of people were entertained. Yeah, you know, it, it's amazing how transient things are. There was that great song about Ebbets Field. There used to be a ballpark here, and about Ebbets Field and the polo grounds. Mm -hmm. And I remember on the 25th anniversary or something when I was doing sports of the shot heard around the world, Bobby Thompson's home run, I got Bobby Thompson and Ralph Branco who threw the pitch. And we went over to where the polo grounds had been, which is now a housing development. But at least there's a brass plaque on the there ground that said this was home plate at the polo grounds. Yeah. But there's nothing for Palisades there, Park? There's nothing yet, although um, one of the tenants in the Carlisle Towers has, has promised me that she's getting a plaque put up near the mailboxes inside. So it's a start. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope either this year or, or next year at the latest to get something built on the site. What killed it? Television? No, uh, television was... No, not television. I've been around for quite I, a while, I guess, in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say um, the park outgrew the town. Or, or the, the ta when the park started back at the turn of the century, uh, there really was no town. There were a few houses. And over the years, the town grew and grew and grew and grew and, and basically choked. Squeezed it out. Squeezed it out, yeah. What a shame. Yeah. Couldn't move it anywhere? Well, there was talk about it. Yeah. There was talk about moving it to western uh, New Jersey. Um, but it never happened. Did you ever ride the cyclone? Mom um, forbid me from riding the cyclone because apparently when mom and dad were dating, dad was being cute, and, and as it went over the first hill, he let go of his hands and he said, watch, and he almost fell out. Oh, boy. So mom said she saved his life, and she said, don't you ever ride that cyclone again. So well, I, I rode all the smaller coasters. I rode the cyclone thing. once, and my heart is still here <laughs> instead of where it's supposed to be because of it. Okay, we've got to say so long to you, Vince. Thanks for coming along. The You're book welcome. is Palisades Amusement Park. It is a nice coffee table book. Oh, we're going to, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting rid of you, and you're going to stay here for another we, whole second. We have plenty more to uh, talk about. If any of you have any fond memories of Palisades Amusement Park, and you'd like to talk about it, share them with us, or just ask Vince any questions at all about the park itself, 
you can give us a call right now, 1-888-NEWS-12-NJ. It's a piece of New Jersey history that I think many, many people miss. I'm sorry I got mixed up about the segments. <laughs> you need a law firm with the financial resources to prepare your case correctly, but one that will make you feel right at home. One whose partners have more than 150 years experience, but who will return your phone calls and see you at your convenience. Levinson, Axelrod, Wheaton and Grazel. Big enough to fight hard for you, but small enough to make you their most important client. Call 1-800-34-NJ-LAW for a free consultation. Nobody covers Garden State transportation like News 12 New Jersey. The morning edition shows you the best ways to get around before you leave the house. Our traffic report pinpoints backups and delays on the parkway and turnpike, and road construction on local highways. Plus, we give you the inside track on New Jersey Transit. Your transportation information is on News 12 New Jersey, what Jersey's all about 24 hours every day. The traffic report on News 12's morning edition is brought to you by Jersey Central Power and Light. And welcome back to Jersey's Talking. My guest is Vince Gargiulo, and we have been talking about his book entitled Palisades Amusement Park, A Century of Fond Memories. And we have one of our viewers on the line now, Vince, and it's John from Colts Neck. John, hi, how are you? Hello, John, Lee. hello. Hi, Lee. Yeah, do you, do you remember Palisades Park? Yeah, when I grew up, I uh, lived about three blocks away from the place in Fort Lee. Yeah. And, uh... I'm about 39 now. I'll bet. But when we were about 8 years old to 12 years old, right before they closed the park, we used to go swimming there all the time in the pool. The saltwater pool? Yeah, we used to sneak up through the locker rooms and get in for free every day. Oh! Uh -huh. <laughs> the only problem was getting out the gate. Oh, you could get in, but you couldn't get out? Yeah, because you had to give the key back to the locker. Yeah, uh, that key on the, on the elastic yeah. thing that you uh -huh. put around your leg or your arm? I remember that. Right, yeah. right. They used to do that at all the, uh, the public pools in those days. John, thanks a whole lot for calling. Okay. And I'm, ho I'm glad you didn't get arrested for being a, a sneak thief, stealing services. But did, was there a lot? Of, was there a fence? I don't recall. There, there, was a fa and, and there was a fence around the whole place, and yeah. there was an admission to get in. There was a hole in the fence behind the stage, the free act stage, where all the rock and roll performers uh, were. And um, all the kids in town all, in, in the surrounding town in snuck, the know, in, right? snuck in through that hole in the fence. What we didn't know is the owner of the, of the park, Irving Rosenthal, knew about the hull. And he told his security guys, if you see anybody coming in through the, through the hull, turn the other way. Because his philosophy was, if you had $3 to spend, if you were inside the park, you'd spend it all. If you were outside the park and you had to think about paying an admission to get in, you might not come in. So he was a very clever man, the Rosenthal. We have a caller now from uh, Hackensack named Arlene. Hi, Arlene. I am. I had to turn the volume down, so I hope you haven't been speaking about this. But no, I know. We've been waiting patiently for you, Arlene. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you're finally here, and I'm the volume is turned down. I don't know. I heard through the grapevine that there's a possibility a film might be made based on this book. Is this true or not? I, I didn't hear uh, the question. Are they going to make a movie based on your book? Uh, Have you heard anything there, about there that? There is some talk about making a film on the, uh, on the book. Um, I, I think it's, uh, well, it's, it's in the works. Okay. Is Arlene still there? She's gone. I was going to ask her where she heard that because I'm sure you'd be interested to know. I mean, if it was Steven Spielberg that she heard it from, that would be the good news. Uh -huh. Now, people collect things. I remember years ago when I was on the radio, I was talking about the old double-decker Fifth Avenue buses, and I got a call from a guy here in New Jersey. I was on a New York radio station, so I got five of them. He was a collector of old cars and, and buses and trucks, and he actually did have five double-decker buses. What happened to the things at Palisades Park? Do you know the old carousels, the Ferris wheels? Well, the, most of the rides at, at the end in 71 were owned by a gentleman named Mickey Hughes, who was a ride importer. Uh, so many of those rides he just sold off to amusement parks uh, across the country. The carousel, however, belonged to Irving Rosenthal, the owner. And he didn't want to split up the carousel. He loved that, that machine. Uh, he didn't want to sell it to uh, one of the places down the Jersey yeah. Shore because of the salt water. Uh, he eventually wound up selling it to, uh, uh, today it's up in Canada's Wonderland. 
uh, outside of Ontario, I believe it is. And uh, they just refurbished it a couple of years ago, and it looks terrific. And it's still turning around and entertaining lots of new fans. Okay, we have another viewer on the line now from uh, calling from Lodi. Hi, Louie. How are you? Hello, Lee. Louie, Louie, Louie. Here's my question. Uh, what was the source of the salt in the pool? Was it pumped off from the river and purified or added up at the uh, pool level? Well, to my knowledge, the Hudson River is a freshwater river, so I don't know well, where the salt came no, from. No, that, that's the controversy. At that point in the river, it's actually oh, it salt is, water. It is salt water. It okay. doesn't really turn fresh until maybe up by Poughkeepsie. Um, you might consider that water at Edgewater, where, where the water was pumped up, you might consider it brackish, but uh, percentage-wise, it was still more towards the salt. So uh, in, in answer to your question, um, that pool got its salt strictly from the Hudson. No salt was added to it. Uh, and yeah, it had huge filtration uh, tanks that, that purified that water. In fact, it was uh, refilled every day. It's, it's hard to think nowadays that people used to swim in the Hudson River. There were beaches at the bottom of the Palisades, sure. and people used to swim in the East River of Manhattan, too. They, they uh, were different times. They were different times, uh, but I understand the Hudson River is getting a little cleaner again. That's what I heard. But I didn't know the salt water went up that far. I thought it kind of ended in the bay, they, so, actually, so I learned something. Actually, that was built something. in 1913. They built these, uh, well, that's when they built the pool, and that's the time they built this huge pipeline that went down the 200-foot cliffs under the town of Edgewater and into the uh, Hudson River. Must and those a, pipes are still there today. I was going to say, it must have been a hell of a pump. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yourself. Uh, the other thing about, uh, that I wonder about when, when things go away the, the way that did, was there an official closing? I mean, did somebody say, this is it? Uh, no. We're I, putting the ribbon back I, together I heard and there tying was, there was some, some sort of a comment made um, on the PA system when, the, when they closed, but it, it, was, it wasn't anything too, uh, too cryptic. Who were some of the stars that performed there in the shows? Um, well, in, in the 20s, they had Charleston contests on a regular basis. Yeah. In the 40s, they had big bands like Harry James. In the uh, 50s and 60s, they had, I mean, it's a who's who of rock and roll. Um, everybody from, from Chubby Checker to the Supremes to uh, the Jackson Five, uh, Bobby Rydell, Fabian. I mean, all, all those Philadelphia guys. On, yeah. You know, I notice in the pictures in the book, there's a picture of a sleigh ride. Now, was that ice that was brought in every day, or were you open in the winter there at Palestine? No, it was, ju it, was one of the, uh, it was one of the coasters. Um, oh, and it just looked like a sleigh ride. And it looked ride. like a sleigh ride, oh, okay. and, and it acted like a sleigh ride. Now, how many owners were there of the park over the years, do you know? Over the years, uh, well, the majority of the owners were the, the uh, Skank brothers who purchased it in 1910. Well, that's, who were the, that's a famous show business family. They the sure were. <laughs> yes, sure they made they, a lot of movies down through yeah, the years. Um, uh, Nicholas was the head of MGM, or became the head of yeah. MGM. Uh, Joseph became the head of uh, uh, United Artists. Um, and when, then when they sold the park, they sold it to the Rosenthal brothers, Jack and Irving. Uh, At that and they point, had it up to the end. I, I do have to wrap you up, and this time I really mean it. Thanks Honestly, for being with us. <laughs> you get two looks at the book, folks, this time. Palisades Amusement Park, A Century of Fond Memories by Vince Gargiulo. Vince, thanks for being with thanks, us. We'll Vince. be right back, and we're going to, uh, well, we're going to try and scare you a little bit and get a little spooky because we are going to visit the Adams Family Mansion, okay? TV Talk.